Good evening, doctors. My name is Rahul Desai, and on behalf of FDC and Med Talks, I hereby welcome you all to today's live module brought to you by Enerzal Zero and in memory of Dr. Kiki Agarwal, sir. Dear viewers, Dr. Sanjay Kalra, sir, has covered up the drug treatment modalities, whether you say bicarbonates, sulfonylureas, melatonides, alpha glucosidine inhibitors, in all the previous sessions. And now, today, Visar will take us through insulin, intermediate acting and short acting. If any of the viewers have missed the previous session, they can log on to the same platform and attend all the sessions recorded over there. Now, before I hand over the platform to Sir, as you all are eager to listen to him on today's topic, let me have the opportunity to announce the winners of last episode quiz. And the winners are from Delhi, Dr. Vinod Kumar Ladia, Dr. S.R. Elwadi, Dr. Bimla Kapoor, Dr. Ashwini Malotra, Dr. Surinder Chadda, Dr. Geeta Gurnani, Dr. M.P. Jodka, Dr. P.C. Pava. Then from Jharkhand, we have Dr. Gautam Dakta. From Karnataka, we have Dr. K.M. Prasanna Kumar. From Odisha, we have Dr. Gangadhar Rath. From Jharkhand, again, we have Dr. S.S. Rana. From Gujarat, we have Dr. Jitendra Kumar Shah. From Jammu and Kashmir, we have Dr. Shahid Sofi. From Rajasthan, we have Dr. Emma Chipa. From Punjab, we have Dr. Namrata Puri and Dr. Sanjeev Puri. From Haryana, we have Dr. I.C. Garg and Dr. Ravi Bhatt from Karnataka. Then from Maharashtra, we have Dr. Bina Gesota, Dr. Girish Gesota, Dr. Bharat Picha, Dr. Damodar Jaiswani, Dr. Hitesh Vora, Dr. Farid Kimani, Dr. Poonam Shahani, Dr. Manju Vasudev, Dr. Kirit Lalan, Dr. R.N. Tiwari, Dr. Somnath Suryavanshi, Dr. Vani Ganpati, Dr. Sachin Gujarati, Dr. Lalita Bhatt, Dr. Rajeshwari Sunku, Dr. Kaval Saluja, Dr. Bharat Jain, Dr. Harsh Shah, Dr. Sarush Narang, Dr. Seema Shah, Dr. Suresh Patel, Dr. Sopan Tuse, Dr. Gajanan Sanab, Dr. Anand Purandre. Then from Uttar Pradesh, we have Dr. Irfanullah, Dr. Arun Kumar Garg, Dr. Asma Saeed, Dr. A. S. Khanna, Dr. Krishna Bhadur, Dr. Sanjay Merotra, Dr. Pallavi Rai, Dr. Surjit Kalsi, Dr. Ashwini Kumar, Dr. Devrat Rai. From West Bengal, we have Dr. Shantanu Kumar Bhattacharya, Dr. Dheeraj Kumar Haldar, and from Uttarakhand, we have Dr. Seema Saxena. So congratulations to all those winners of last episode's quiz. And with this, I hand over the platform to Dr. Sanjay Kalra, sir. Over to you, sir. Thank you, Rahul, for that introduction and warm greetings to everybody. It's always being great part of being part of this uh, program, Diabetes Essentials. And uh, today we'll speak about insulin, one of the toughest parts of diabetes management. If someone were to ask me, uh, what is it that I find most difficult about diabetes care, uh, I would have no hesitation in saying that it is insulin motivation, insulin initiation, which I find the toughest. Insulin initiation is difficult because uh, insulin is an injection. Insulin has been with us for a hundred years now. It has won five Nobel Prizes, four directly and one indirectly. The indirect story is very interesting because it was a person called George Mino who, in, who discovered vitamin B12 and who discovered that B12 was a treatment for pernicious anemia. How did insulin contribute to this Nobel Prize? Because George Mino himself was type 1 diabetes. And if insulin had not been there, he was very sick actually. Uh, uh, he had diabetes when, uh, when insulin was in short supply. And he was able to get insulin. He survived. And he lived a long and healthy life, a productive life. So that is how insulin got its fifth Nobel Prize. In spite of the fact that insulin has saved so many lives, there is still a lot of hesitancy, a lot of skepticism around this drug. So what I find most difficult is creating bridges over these barriers, these barriers of lack of insulin acceptance. But it is not that this is the only challenge we face in practice. We face the same challenges when we want to convince our public to follow personal hygiene, to follow social hygiene or to take vaccination. So it is part and parcel of our life as doctors trying to motivate people to take therapy. We'll talk today and next week about insulin. We need to overcome the barriers to insulin. And to do that, like I said, the first thing to do is to train ourselves. 
to educate ourselves we are doing that we need to train ourselves about the hard skills as well as the soft skills and we'll try to do both of these things this week and next week we should also be effective at in at imparting patient education and public education and it's not only just education that we are giving we are also supporting the patient we are helping the patient we are counseling the patient and one of the things that we counsel in is coping skills many people with diabetes develop what is known as diabetes distress diabetes distress means it is a severe emotion because of perceived inability note the word perceived inability to cope with the demands of living with diabetes so patients will feel afraid uh, how will i live my life with diabetes and then on top of that we add insulin so then the patient becomes more afraid more dejected more depressed uh, the doctor has told me to take insulin i do not know how to inject what will happen to me so we need to cope uh, with this and for that coping skills training is required if patient is not adhering to therapy we have to find the reason and then we have to manage accordingly now sooner or later insulin will be required it will be required at onset in people with type 1 diabetes very early on after the onset of pancreatic diabetes it will be required in severe gestational diabetes mellitus where if the woman does not respond to medical nutrition therapy and so again it will be required also in type 2 diabetes data from uk pds shows that in about 50% of patients after 6 years of diabetes there is enough beta cell failure or beta cell insufficiency for the patient to need exogenous insulin if we do not give insulin from outside fasting and postprandial glucose will begin to rise hba1c will begin to rise and the patient will get an unwanted glycemic burden this unwanted glycemic burden the burden of hyperglycemia will cause what we call metabolic memory it will cause metabolic memory or glycemic legacy and this metabolic memory or glycemic legacy the wrong one will actually lead to long term complications macrovascular and microvascular if we give insulin in a timely manner we will be able to control glucose regulate metabolism maintain weight also reduce the risk of vascular complications and prevent acute complications so insulin is beneficial unfortunately in our country less than 1/3 of patients who require insulin are on it out of these 1/3 1/3 are on insulin analogs and the average dose of insulin per day is about 32 units now do note that across the country the average dose of insulin varies between 32 and 36 units so you can follow the 40 unit formula which i do in my opd my routine uh, prescription for insulin initiation for a stable patient will be something like 20 units twice a day of premix insulin analog that's 40 units each cartridge or pen has 300 units if i call the patient back after one week that pen will have finished by one week and then we can move ahead we can decide what we want to do later on when you want to prescribe insulin the first step is to decide that yes insulin is needed insulin will be needed if your patient is severely hyperglycemic symptomatic s for severe s for symptomatic sick if your patient has an acute illness or a chronic illness which will respond to good glucose control another s that was sickness the fourth s will be special situations renal impairment hepatic impairment pregnancy lactation the fifth s will be surgery if patient is in a hurry for surgery whether elective semi elective or uh, emergency then and sugars are high then insulin will control glucose much faster than all the tablets we classify insulin as uh, regimens basal premixed and basal bolus but patients do not classify this way for a patient the insulin regimen that we prescribe would be once a day twice a day thrice a day four times a day so you can have many permutations combinations now but for practical purposes let us focus on the left side of our slide basal premixed and basal bolus these are the options that we have for initiation of therapy so first we initiate therapy then we optimize therapy we use the maximum possible dose that is uh, tolerated and if things don't work then we can always intensify therapy 
we can change the regimen so first let's talk about initiation for initiation we have these four options basal premixed once daily premixed twice daily and basal bolus depending upon the profile of the patient we decide which regimen to give these are two methods in the next two slides which i use in my clinic uh, to help me characterize the glycemic status of the patient the glycemic pentad the glycemic flower so to say shares five aspects of target setting when we are controlling glucose whether with tablets or with insulin we want to control fasting glucose postprandial glucose and hba1c we want to minimize hypoglycemia and minimize glycemic variability these are five targets if we understand these targets and we take a good history and examination that will help us create what we call the glucophenotype phenotype means the sum of all external attributes of a particular thing a particular object a particular person a particular animal but glucophenotype means what kind of phenotype the glucose has what is the fasting pp glucose what is the postprandial excursion pp minus fasting what is the glycemic variability throughout the day what happens what is the hb1c is there a risk of hypoglycemia along with that you also see whether your patient is obese normal weight or thin you also see if there is any acute precipitating factor there might be an acute infection an acute inflammation acute psychosocial stress if we correct this it is possible that glucose may come down this earlier slide that i showed you the glycemic phenotype the glucophenotype is something that i used to use in the past but it was very biochemical very dry and now this is what i use in my clinic i use what i call the sure framework s u r e this has two action based domains and two caution based domains s stands for severity and style of hyperglycemia the the glucose the more prevalent the glucose i think of insulin style of hyperglycemia if fasting glucose is high then i will take basal insulin as my first choice if both fasting and postprandial are high then i will take premixed u stands for urgency and utility of control will urgent glucose control help my patient if patient has got a burst appendix yes if patient has got a urinary tract infection or genital infection yes but if patient has carcinoma pancreas with metastasis to liver then there is no utility so if my patient has high urgency and high utility then i will start basal bolus insulin four injections a day basal alone will not work if the urgency is not so much then i can start with premixed or basal also to counter these action based domains s and u we have two uh, caution based domains as well the first is r r is for risk of hypoglycemia three medical causes which predispose to hypo renal hepatic and gastrointestinal impairment three endocrine factors which predispose to hypo hypopituitarism uh, these predispose to hypoglycemia hypopituitarism hypothyroidism addison's disease or hypoadrenalism three lifestyle related disorders or aspects which predispose to hypoglycemia elderly age irregular meal habits and alcohol intake so if we remember these nine we know in which kind of patients to go slow if there is any of these factors in present in a patient then we will start lower dose of insulin another e is expected adherence and expectation of patients we must remember that the captain of the ship is the person who lives with diabetes so if the person is enthusiastic energetic educated willing to take care of himself or herself the family is willing to take care then we become more aggressive we use more aggressive insulin regimens but if the patient himself or herself is not expecting too much then you go slow we also suggest what we call the 5a approach to improve self management assess your patient's motivation level advise your patient in a personalized manner agree upon realistic goals so agree with the patient okay madam you've not agreed to take insulin 
there is no immediate life threatening or organ threatening situation so let's take tablets if the fasting comes down to 125 and if the pp comes down to 200 we'll continue tablets but if it doesn't then we'll start insulin next week assist your patient in anticipating barriers and in developing a specific action plan patient says i don't know how to cook healthy food assist your patient in that patient says i don't know how to do glucose monitoring even i don't know how to do i don't know how to use this machine that you have got but let us click on uh, click on youtube we might be able to find it and also the fifth a would be arrange follow up support so call the patient back more frequently if more follow up is required or be in touch on whatsapp or through other means now we spoke of regimens first so let me revise uh, that and let me restate first of all we decide the insulin regimen then we decide the insulin preparation after that we decide the delivery device basal insulin is recommended by most guidelines as first line therapy but this will not work if your patient is sick or symptomatic or severely hyperglycemic but still in basal insulin if you have high fasting glucose we can give basal insulin it will control glucose fairly well fasting glucose will come down postprandial will not come down directly for that you will have to give tablets metformin sulfonylureas dpp4 inhibitors sgl2 inhibitors whatever you feel like the drugs which i used most often are uh, glargine as well as uh, degludec these are both uh, analogs if your patient is not able to afford and i have many patients like that then i will use nph so degludec glargine and nph these are the ones that are used frequently uh, Detemir is also available. That is drug of choice in pregnancy. So that is what I use in pregnancy. In my OPD, mostly what I use is premixed insulin. The reason is that patients don't come to me early on. They come only when they are severely hyperglycemic or symptomatic or they are sick. Or maybe they are in special situations or awaiting surgery. So we have to be faster. So what I use most often is twice daily premixed insulin to begin therapy. I can start different types of premix insulin. Human insulin is there, 30, 70, 50, 50. Uh, analogs are there, like biphasic Lispro, biphasic Aspart. So I use the analogs more often because troubleshooting is less. We give the injection usually twice a day, but you can give once a day as well. If I choose to give once a day, that will be with the major meal of the day. Usually, fasting and PP both will get controlled in about 80 to 90% of patients. Begin with a lower dose. My commonest, like I said in the OPD, it was 20 units BD. But then do remember that I work in Haryana, where the average body weight is slightly more than in many parts of the country. Maybe for safety, we would want to start with 10 units BD. Now, our patients can be quite impatient. And if glucose level doesn't come down, in one week, they will come back and fight you. So what we do is we explain. Insulin is the most potent anabolic hormone in the body. It will give you strength. Within two to three days, you will begin to feel better mentally as well as physically you will begin to feel younger if you have an infection maybe a soft tissue infection a skin infection balanopostitis pruritus vulvae and it has not been resolving for the past so many weeks it will begin to resolve in the next two to three days you will find an improvement a week to 10 days later your pp glucose will come down and maybe 10 to 14 days later your fasting glucose will come down and then you call the patient back after one week now, actually, insulin is not going to take so long, but you have given a reality check, you have given a roadmap, and when the patient comes back after a week, then you say, Madam, you are feeling happier? Yes. The infection is better? Yes. Glucose is high? Yes. But Madam, we had already told you it will take 10 days for the glucose to come, to come down. Now, see, we started 10 units twice a day earlier, last time. Now, let me make it 12 or 14. Gradually, we will increase the gear. We will drive slowly. We don't want to have a short life, a fast life with you. We want you to have a long and healthy life. So we are going to race like as if we are going in a marathon. So this is routinely what we will talk to our patients about. And like I said, my commonest initiation is twice daily premixed. If patients are less sick, I start basal. If patients are at very high risk of hypoglycemia, I start basal. But if patients have high urgency and utility of control, and there is an associated infection, then I usually start basal bolus. I start this in uh, some people with tuberculosis, in virtually everybody with diabetic foot, in people who have severe infection and severe hyperglycemia. You can start this on OPD basis. 
many a times admission will be avoided and here we will give three doses of rapid acting insulin and one basal injection for the three rapid acting insulins you can give rapid acting regular insulin you can give lispro aspart or uh, glulisin all these are available and at night you can give a basal insulin like glargine degludec detemir or nph let us see how we decide the regimen if fasting glucose is high choose basal if both are high then we choose premixed or intensive how do we choose premixed versus intensive if there is an acute comorbidity requiring urgent euglycemia like infection or injury then we will choose intensive if there is a higher risk of hypoglycemia then we will stick to premixed or basal depends upon the hba1c at presentation if the hba1c is high use more number of insulin doses per day if the hba1c is low you can get away with one or two doses you also have to look at the psychosocial aspects if your patient is unable to have regular meals then intensive therapy is not good if your patient is unable to self monitor or self adjust the literacy levels are not high numeracy levels are not good and there is no support from the family then intensive therapy is not good then we will start a fixed dose regimen using either basal or premixed so not only the biomedical but also the psychosocial aspects will play a role if your patient doesn't accept insulin happily you can always start a negotiation by saying uh, madam actually we should be giving you four injections of insulin a day but since you are not willing let me try with two injections alone so let me try premixed so that is one way of another way of actually going to through this now we had spoken so far about initiation of insulin let's go on to intensification if our initial regimen has not worked we can always intensify to basal plus which means basal insulin at night and one rapid acting insulin with the heaviest meal of the day so therefore you will have basal plus 1 or you can have basal plus 2 depending on one or two meals and if you have basal plus 3 then that is called basal bolus regimen premixed insulin can also be given as thrice daily sometimes but i do not use it quite fre frequently in my opd we also have something known as high mix insulin regimens that is 50 50 so you can give 50 50 insulin twice a day thrice a day also can be given you can give hetero mix regimen that is high mix with breakfast and pre mix with uh, low mix with dinner so this will be useful in people who have high pp glucose after breakfast people who are taking heavy breakfast or heavy carbohydrate based breakfast like all of us have in india the guidelines from all across the world say the same thing what we have just said but basically what i would advise is that in our clinics we look at the kind of patients who come to us let us first master any one regimen the one which i would suggest for most of us most of the time is premixed insulin twice daily keep that as an anchor for your mind for your thought process if you have a patient where the severity of hyperglycemia is less urgency of control is low risk of hypoglycemia is high and expected adherence is low then move to basal if you have a patient where the severity of hyperglycemia is high urgency is high risk of hypoglycemia is low expected adherence and support is high then shift to basal bolus so with this in our mind we have decided the regimen once you have decided your regimen choose just one or two brand names whatever company you like you might want to choose biphasic aspart lispromix whatever you feel like uh, choose that begin working with that get the hang of it once you your chemist your uh, staff are comfortable with it then you can explore other brand names we should also be aware of how to inject insulin so we should know the technique of uh, injecting the technique of storing and also uh, the technique of traveling but it is quite easy actually whether you're using or uh, insulin syringes and vials it's quite easy to take insulin and pen devices are much more convenient much easier for the patient to use so i would suggest that we use pens initially but of course look at your patient's affordability and decide accordingly so let's conclude today's talk but we will talk again about insulin to, uh, next week we will use the same slides and we'll talk about different aspects of insulin therapy sooner or later insulin will be required in type 2 diabetes 
if we initiate insulin in a timely manner we can control glucose give good health to the patient and prevent long term complications but we should know how to initiate insulin intensify insulin and especially how to motivate the patient to take insulin with this let's go to our questions for la of last week's quiz and congrats to all of you who won prizes so acarbose delays the absorption of starch and sucrose and that's why it's used to treat diabetes ors should be given even in a patient who is vomiting it will bring the electrolyte balance back to normal and will prevent vomiting questions for this week one based on insulin insulin deficiency is associated with let's put on our biochemistry turbans reduced lipolysis increased ketogenesis reduced gluconeogenesis reduced proteolysis so remember insulin is an anabolic hormone insulin deficiency therefore will be a catabolic state so insulin deficiency will be associated with reduction in lipolysis increase in ketogenesis reduction in gluconeogenesis reduction in proteolysis which of these is which of these uh, options are anabolic which are catabolic based upon that you can answer another question our nrzl zero question of the week a uh, solution that is similar to the osmolality of plasma which will not cause any cell damage is termed as hypotonic normal saline isotonic or hypertonic so a solution with the same osmolality as that of plasma is hypo iso or hypertonic or normal saline this is our question for this week so i'd like to thank you for a patient hearing uh, like i said uh, this is actually the toughest part of uh, uh, the toughest part of uh, dietary management that i can think of uh, and uh, let's look at the questions for today we have a question from dr amit patel dr amit patel is a senior pharmacologist good evening amit how are you what anti diabetics to stop when insulin started thanks a lot for that and good evening to dr subhash grover uh, drpt345 good evening hi so amit uh, very good question whatever your patient is on you can continue with the exception of sulfonylureas there are caveats to that if now if your patient is on metformin or dpp4 inhibitor or sgl2 inhibitor and there is no safety or tolerability issue we will continue these drugs if your patient is on glp1 ra and there is no safety or tolerability issue we will continue these drugs irrespective of what insulin we are starting if your insulin has been started to achieve glucose control then we will have to intensify the existing therapy that is why all these drugs are needed on the other hand if insulin has been started because there is a safety or tolerability issue we feel that the drug we were giving was not safe maybe it is causing gi disturbance maybe it is causing hepatic disturbance or maybe patient has got pancreatitis then the offending drug has to be stopped so first of all you see the indication for insulin initiation secondly is there uh, is there any situation where glucose control is normal but you are giving insulin for anabolic effect the answer is yes imagine a patient who has tuberculosis patient is not eating anything patient is not taking adequate calorie patient is on sulfonylurea metformin and glucose levels are normal patient is actually starving now in such a case we want to give insulin for anabolic effect so we will stop the metformin as well there is no need to give metformin actually by stopping metformin you will improve the appetite of the patient and the tuberculosis uh, the quality of life in tuberculosis management will go up so this was easy now the difficult part is sulfonylureas if you are starting basal insulin you can continue sulfonylureas if you are starting premixed insulin once a day you can continue sulfonylureas in the antipodal meal antipodies is actually used to describe australia new zealand southern hemisphere so if i am giving premixed insulin at breakfast i can continue sulfonylurea at dinner and vice versa if however patient is on basal bolus therapy then there is no point in giving sulfonylurea along with that so that is the main uh, the main uh, caveat that we have when we start insulin there are other questions as well 
and uh, dr girish kesota says what is somogi phenomenon so this is important so there are two phenomena somogi and dawn in both of them fasting glucose is high but the pathophysiology is different in dawn phenomenon what happens is as dawn approaches the organism is about to wake up counter regulatory hormones increase growth hormone adrenaline nor adrenaline all these increase and that is why glucose levels rise if there is a dawn phenomenon you have to increase the dose of the insulin that you were giving at night or increase increase the dose of metformin that is being given at night but before you do that you have to differentiate dawn phenomenon from somogi effect somogi effect, effect is that at around 3 am when insulin sensitivity is highest glucose levels fall glucose levels fall at 2 or 3 or 4 am we do not pick them up because we are not checking and a rebound occurs the body feels afraid i might die and counter regulatory hormones come into play and at 6 or 7 or 8 am when we check the glucose it is very high so how you differentiate is you can do a 3 am glucose you can also do continuous glucose monitoring but you can just tell your patient to check glucose at 3 am suppose a uh, patient says i don't have a glucometer i cannot afford one you can just check urine sugar ask the patient to wake up at 2 am 4 am and just keep the urine in a in a bottle we can check in the morning if it is smoky phenomenon urine glucose might be nil at night if it is dawn phenomenon at, you know like 2 pm 4 pm 6 pm you will find a urine sugar rise so that can also help you in smoky effect you reduce the nighttime dose of insulin or you change to an analog a safer analog like degludec in uh, dawn phenomenon you increase the dose of insulin another tough question from dr rajeshwari so let me read this out please thank you dr rajeshwari sunku for this question 65 year old gentleman with diabetes hypertension ischemic heart disease fasting glucose 290 post lunch 355 hbc 10.6 so that is very poor control patient is already on three injections mixed at 22 in the morning 22 at night and actor be 20 in the afternoon so we can give like this but we should change genovia is also there glimmer 2 mg bd voglibos 0.3 tds metformin 500 tds how to control glucose so dr ajeshwari could you please share the weight of the patient that will help and also if the blood urea is normal so let us assume that urea creatinine are normal first we change the look at the diet and exercise optimize diet optimize exercise see what the patient is taking at night fasting glucose is 290 maybe patient is drinking 250 ml of full cream milk maybe patient is taking chapati with lot of ghee put on it so just look for those things uh first optimize the diet then you optimize the exercise ask the patient to go for a 10 or 15 minute walk after dinner that will help bring down the fasting glucose third is optimize stress is the patient able to sleep well if you are not able to sleep well then glucose levels will rise during the night maybe the patient is a shift worker so ask him to change his shifts now in pharmacological first of all we optimize the pharmacotherapy so we will change the mixture at the day we can give actrapid three times a day something like maybe uh, total you are giving 62 units so let me increase the dose by 20% percent. 62 plus 12 that is 74 so let me give something like uh 15 units of actrapid three times a day that is 45 and maybe 25 units of a long acting analog here i would like to give degludec other options are glargin u300 or glargin 100 any of them can be given so i would give 25 units at night genovia we can continue glimepiride and voglibos we will stop they will not act much metformin 500 mg tds is fine if patient is able to take we can give uh, maybe 1 gram at night we can increase the night time dose we can also strongly consider giving uh, glp1 receptor agonist that is liraglutide but that will be another injection per day but even with what i have said glucose levels will come down you will find that glucose levels are coming down uh, very fast so and uh, dr akhil contractor also asks about glp1 ra oral as well as injectable so let me take this both together oral glp1 ra will be available by november or so in india it will actually change our uh, style of treatment because people will accept it but we do not know the cost if it comes at around maybe 100 rupees a day still people will afford but if it is 300 400 rupees per day then it might be difficult to prescribe but it is very helpful it will bring down glucose bring down body weight 
and will also improve long term cv outcomes in the meantime we have injectable glp one ra we have dulaglutide once a week and liraglutide once a day to this patient that dr rajveshri has shared we can actually stop genovia and add uh, liraglutide once a day we will just convince the patient take one me one uh, injection extra the cost also it will be more but not too much because we are stopping genovia we are stopping glimepiride we are stopping voglibos so lot of uh, tablets will come down and the uh, cost will also come down there that will bring down the fasting glucose rapidly dr grish has asked a question about uh, sugar is not controlled even after full doses of insulin what to look for and how uh, dr grish i thought i would take this in the next week uh, but look for reasons first there has to be a reason either there is an issue with diet exercise or stress or there is an issue with the way the injection is stored the way the injection is bought it might have been bought from the wrong shop where uh, cold chain was not maintained so where the insulin was procured from how it was uh, stored and how it is being taken so look for these things and usually we'll find the cause so diet exercise stress insulin buying or procurement insulin storage insulin uh, technique apart from this look for any infection or inflammation or invasion is there any kind of occult infection so the questions to ask in the opd will be any ear ache any uh, discharge from the ear any cough cold lower respiratory upper respiratory infection any skin infection any genito urinary infection and the commonest occult ones that you will see will be uti belanopostitis and pruritus valve uh, we will take this up in more detail next week dr girish dr rahul uh, dr ravi bhatt has a question when do i give 50 50 versus 30 70 so 50 50 we will use when postprandial glucose levels are high how you count pp breakfast minus pre breakfast or pp lunch minus pre lunch or post dinner minus pre dinner if the value is more than 74 then 50 50 will be better if the value is below uh, 40 then 30 70 or 27 575 both are fine if it is in between you can use either dr manu has a question how do i intensify premix so it depends upon how you start manu uh, some of us in some patients we start once daily in others we start twice daily my preferred style would be twice daily but many times when you are negotiating with a lady with a gentleman they don't agree so they say okay madam at least start one injection so which one your choice but if fasting glucose is uh, sorry if post breakfast glucose is very high we'll start the premixed at breakfast time if fasting glucose is very high we can start at dinner time also if this works fine otherwise we intensify to twice daily so supposing i was on maybe like 20 units insulin once a day things are not working i'll uh, make change 20 to 24 i will add 20% and then i will divide into two i'll make it 12 units twice a day i will not make it 20 twice a day that will be too much actually hypo might occur so 20 once a day i will intensify to 12 twice a day that is what i would usually do i would also stop the sulfonylurea if it was going on some people give in premix three times a day i usually do not use that but how i can use three injections a day is if patient is not agreeing for four i can give premix with dinner and i can give rapid acting at breakfast and lunch so that is also a good way of bringing down pp glucose then the dose would be something like rapid acting 10 units at breakfast 10 units at lunch and maybe premix 20 or 24 or 25 units at dinner time dr sunil sarkar uh, sriskar has a question nph timing usually 10 pm usually 10 pm there is one exception these days that is if your patient is on steroids post covid if your patient is on prednisolone or methylprednisolone once a day then glucose levels are highest post lunch or pre dinner then the best way of time to give nph would be at breakfast time dr ravindra shejal last about starting insulin Uh, doses in type 2 and type 1 so in uh, type 1 if your patient is stable patient has come to you for the first time with ketonuria or absence of ketonuria and there is no ketoacidosis then 
uh, we will start insulin and i usually will start with something like 0.5 to 0.6 units per kg per day so let us say the boy has come to me at 40 kg so 0.6 of 40 would be something like 24 so then i will start four doses basal bolus i'll start maybe six units of regular insulin breakfast lunch dinner and six or eight maybe units of uh, long acting nph glargine degludec at night time and then i'll titrate every two or three days i will remind the family and the patient that first you will have good anabolic effect feeling of well-being after that your glucose levels will begin to come down for type 2 diabetes usually we start with 0.2 or 0.3 units per kg body weight so supposing my patient is uh, let us say 100 kg then i will start with maybe 30 units or so per day sometimes i start with 40 also depends upon if the patient has an acute infection or not if patient has diabetic foot you can also start with one unit per kg per day so it will depend upon remember dr vindra the sure uh, uh, model which we showed sure severity and style of hyperglycemia urgency and utility of control as opposed to or counterbalanced with risk of hypoglycemia and patient's education and expectancy. Dr. Girish has another question, sarcopenia. This is loss of muscle and it is very common. Primary sarcopenia means it is because of old age. Secondary sarcopenia means there is a cause. It can be diabetes, thyroid, uh, testosterone deficiency, menopause, vitamin D deficiency. How do you overcome? Do not diet too much because there is something known as sarcopenic obesity. If you begin dieting, then the whether obesity will improve or not is a separate matter, but muscle loss will become worse. So you increase protein intake, take high protein diet and do resistance exercise. You can teach your patient to do any kind of resistance exercise. Even if they, let us say you are in the kitchen, just uh, lift the bowls or lift the containers of uh, ghee or rice or whatever, 10, 20 times, that is biceps exercise. So resistance as well as high protein diet and ensure good calcium vitamin D intake. If patient is uh, uh, hypogonadal, patient has low testosterone, then we can supplement testosterone that will improve muscle mass. Dr. Girish Singh has a question and that is uh, Bildagliptin metformin, one of the safest uh, combinations to take. You can actually even take in pre-diabetes and you can take for many, many years. There is data to show that it is a effective combination for up to five to six years. So this is one of the safest medications that we can take. If you want to monitor, you can monitor HB1C. That should be done regularly. And every now and then a liver function would be fine. But uh, I doubt if there will be any complaint. You will usually not have an issue. If you want to give a gliptin and your patient has hepatic impairment, then drug of choice will be Lena Gliptin. Okay, we have uh, another topic about uh, bromocriptine from Dr. Patel. So, uh, Amit, it was used earlier in the past. Uh, let me take it now. Otherwise, I will forget until by next week. Bromocriptin is a dopamine modulator. Dopamine is a catecholamine. Catecholamine are the fight, flight, fright hormones. If you want to go for an exam, if you want to go and win a gold medal in Olympics, you need catecholamines. One of them is dopamine. We always talk of adrenaline and noradrenaline, but in the brain, the most potent and the most uh, the, the most common catecholamine is dopamine actually what does dopamine do it makes you dopaminergic it makes you happy it makes you excited so just say like we use the word dabang dilli you can also use dopaminergic dilli or you can say mumbai is a dopaminergic city it never sleeps if you have stress every now and then it is an it is a it is an adaptive mechanism if you have exam once in three months, six months, that time you get stressed, you study more and you do well. But if your teacher stresses you continuously, 12 weeks, uh, 12 uh, months in a year, you will remain under stress. When the exam comes, you will burn out. So that is how bromocriptine was used for dopamine modulation, counter-regulatory modulation, so that glucose level would come down. But it didn't work very well in practice, so it is not used. In some of my patients, when fasting glucose is high, and if there is a lot of stress, when you take the history, you can make out that there is a lot of stress. Then what we do is we give a very small dose of maybe hydroxyzine, that is Atrex, or maybe something like a tryptomer 10 milligram at night, or a clonazepam 
0.25 milligram at night just to bring down the stress to improve quality of sleep and uh, lo and behold fasting glucose also comes down so that is if you feel that there is a psychosocial stressor at play which is causing release of hormones like uh, like uh, the catecholamines adrenaline and noradrenaline and uh, also which is uh, acting as a as an impediment to uh, to the dietary care that you are giving so in such situations we use these drugs uh, bromocriptin now i do not use in my practice and uh, what i actually use i told you so we've had lots of questions today uh, and uh, we'll continue the discussion next week we'll talk about insulin we'll also talk about difficult diabetes and feel free to share whatever questions you have uh, thank you uh, let's congratulate ourselves on our team's great presentation uh, work at tokyo we could have done better but already we have done better than what we've done in the past and we wish our team the very best for the next olympics namaskar and jai hind so sir i can see here with the number of questions even last week as well as today's and, and uh, what we have discussed that you know the by the time we have reached to the core of essential of diabetes care 52 weeks with dr sanjay alra internally that you know sir we present cases from his coming in last approach to all the doctors who are not asking questions to us and they will get the still the message i don't know how you can differentiate patient a to patient b to patient c and how the therapy also changes so as i today also we have seen that in dr sanjay kalra tried to make insulin very very clear and you know very easy for all of us to uh, start Uh, practicing but i still feel unless we have more cases and more uh, interaction with the doctors and one good thing that you know uh, with uh, fdc with a 570 field force now we have started re registration process because i could see that you know the number of doctors attending are very high but i still felt that you know the core objective of this uh, entire 52 weeks diabetes essential with dr sanjay kalra was or is that we need to work for making diabetes care accessible to all indians that's the basic motto so therefore we have started re-registering doctors those who have been left out or we have been you know uh, maybe because of any other reason they are not been attending yet so i'm sure with this whole efforts going all uh, we will be continuing the sessions beyond 52 weeks be ready for that because this is looking to be you know as i was discussing few weeks before with dr kalra that now looking at the questions looking at the attendance that i think we need you more than ever so thank you dr kalra and uh, i'll not take much of time because already 48 minutes you have taken today jai hind sir jai hind